Hello and welcome to the Colgonology Guide to Making Slow Gin, Part 2. So, here are my slows, out of the freezer, rock solid and, sorry about the noise, I'm giving them a few bangs, so to speak, because what I want to do is um, help to split the skins. I'm going to leave those to defrost now, and uh, I'm going to go out for a dog walk. And uh, I'm looking for something in specific. And I'm looking for something specific. Now, I want to find myself a piece of blackthorn for a specific purpose. Um, I've been looking around on the ground trying to find a dead piece or a piece that's fallen down. Basically, I want a piece of blackthorn with a good spike on it, a good spine. And actually, this one looks pretty good because this is dead and already broken. Um, and that's got some good spikes on it. So we're going to adapt that and take it home and all will make sense shortly. Now, this is the blackthorn I picked up. Uh, when I was out walking and this is what we're going to use to split the skins on any slows that haven't split during the blessing process in the freezer. Um, why am I using this? Because it's traditional. The slows grow on the blackthorn tree so why not use the actual thorns of the blackthorn? Um, it's what people used to do in the olden days. I quite like the idea of keeping the tradition going. Uh, and these are actually thorns. I will just point that out. The name Hawthorn, Blackthorn, they're all quite accurate because these are thorns. A thorn is a branch that comes off the main twig, normally has leaves growing on it for a while, the leaves fall off and what's left behind is a spiky twig, a spiky branch. That's what a thorn is, it's part of the structure of the twig or the branch. Um, thorns do not grow on roses. What roses have are prickles. It's an entirely different structure if you look at it. It's like almost like a scab, it's a structure that grows on the outside of the uh, branch, the stem of the rose. However, I don't think the Guns N' Roses song uh, will sound quite as romantic uh, if Axl Rose is to sing, every rose has its scab. Yeah. So it's a couple of hours later and our slows have now defrosted. And as you can see from the slight leakage of the bag, you can see some of the colour that's going to actually give the colour to the slow gin. So what I'm going to do is transfer these now into a leak-proof bowl. That's all right, let me cut. Now, as you'll see, these are now very squishy and soft. And this one, the skin is split already. You can see the innards there. And in fact, all of them, as I pick them up, are pretty much split somewhere. There's another one, look. Splits around that side. If any of them aren't split, then what I'll do is I will take my blackthorn and I'll prick them. But now they're all going to be put into this Kilner jar. If you've ever tasted a raw slow, you'll know just how bitter they are. But looking at this juice here, I'm just going to run. There's still some bitterness, but it's very sweet. That's what's happened with the bletting. So this rather flash bottle of gin this Citadel Gin de France is going to be the basis of our gin. It's a beautiful bottle, isn't it? Um, I seem to recall my wife went on a holiday to Barbados with some of her friends. And uh, on the way back, she had some money to use up. They were going through duty free and she thought, ah, Steve likes gin. So she bought this. I have no idea of the quality. I should do a bit of a Google, I suppose, really. But it's certainly probably of less quality than some of the other gins I've got in the cupboard. So I think that's going to be the basis of our gin this time. So we've got about 400 grams of slows there. So we're going to put in about 800 uh, millilitres of gin. I mean, to be honest, I'll probably put the whole litre in there. It's not going to make that much difference. Now we're going to save the bottle because we're going to put the gin back into that in a few weeks time. There we go, I'm just going to agitate them, but otherwise I'm going to pretty much just leave them there. There's already a little tiny bit of colour imparting into it. 
And then what I will do over the next few days is I'll show you how the colour changes. One thing I will point out is I haven't added any sugar yet. There is a reason for that. Um, some videos, some recipes you see, it'll show you putting in about half the amount of sugar to the amount of gin. Um, not doing that yet for reasons I will explain in the next video. So there you go, end of part two, part three incoming. In the meantime, in the next week or so, I'll take a photograph every day so you'll be able to see the development of the colour and the flavour. And uh, then we'll go into the process of sweetening. See you soon. Doodle bit.